This is a quick video demo to describe blanking and how it works with Micromanager and the Trigger Scope. This is using a um, control board for the Trigger Scope 4. Now, what I have set up on the right um, corner of the screen over here, this is a function generator and an oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope, the yellow line, represents the output state of TTL1 on the trigger scope. So this would be, say we had TTL running over to a LED illuminator. And so if TTL1 is high, the illuminator would be on. And if TTL1 is low, the illuminator would be off. The blue line represents a function generator, which I have up here. And the, the reason for the function generator is to simulate camera read state output. All right, so let's go through what blanking is. First thing I wanted to show is what is the typical workflow for taking a picture with Micromanager or any other kind of microscopy style of software? So when we say, okay, snap an image, this is what we could call this capture event here, the software capture event. Well, what goes on on the hardware? The first thing that happens is all of the devices connected to Micromanager, maybe that's a, a dichroic uh, wheel or a filter turret that has cubes in it, uh, maybe an emission filter, um, and then different illuminator types like lasers, LEDs. Um, they're all set up typically via USB to serial or direct USB. Um, they're set up to whatever state they need to be in to give me, say, DAPI light or uh, GFP light or Fitzy or whatever. So all of these different devices are told where to go. And most often, the devices will do closed loop operation meaning they will receive a command, do the command, and then respond back, hey, I've done the command. And the software will wait to get that feedback before continuing to the next thing. Now, it may be multi-threaded, it may be open-ended. Some devices you just send it an open or go command and you just hope that it does it. Uh, but most of the time they're closed loop. So once the software gets back that everything's done, then it begins a camera uh, operation. Now this operation typically tells the camera go ahead and set up for one image using whatever settings are specified in the GUI, snap that image, and then um, when the image comes into the computer memory and the camera says, I'm done, um, the software will come back and using, again, USB to serial, it'll say, hey, turn, turn everything off. So shut down your lasers, your LEDs, what have you. Okay, so right now I have a demo camera connected to... Um, I'll move this over here. I have a demo camera connected to Micromanager. This is a fake camera. It has no correlation with the real world, but I also have a trigger scope physically connected to the system. And the trigger scope is set up as a shutter. So when I snap an image uh, with a duration of say 100 milliseconds, the system will open, I'm using air quotes here, open the shutter or enable TTL1 for 100 milliseconds. And then or at least it'll enable TTL1, then it'll tell the camera to take a picture, and then it'll disable TTL1. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna snap this image. Okay, so I get an image over here. This is, again, this is just fake. But because I have a real device connected, that be device being the trigger scope, I can see on my oscilloscope readout here, they got a real output. Now here's the interesting thing about this output. My exposure time was specified for 100 milliseconds. It might be hard to read down here, but down in this position here, the yellow uh, labeled position, we have a width and that's the pulse width. That width is reading 124 milliseconds for that exposure. So this is a 25% software overhead directly related to the fact that if I'm writing control software, the one thing I don't want to do is have the camera take a picture when the device for illumination isn't even in position or isn't even on. So there's, there's some gap there built in on purpose, and the culmination of that gap is displayed in this time domain. So let's do a couple more pictures and see what happens here. I'm going to um, keep the 100 milliseconds for a minute. I'm just going to snap a few images. What I want you to look at is I'm just going to keep snapping. Take a look at how the oscilloscope readout actually changes. So we're getting pulse width differences here between 121, 122, 133, 120. 
on the time delay here. So not only is it longer than what the exposure time should be, it's also jittery. And that has to do with serial communication and how um, USB to serial data is processed in, in the uh, computer, plus the device receiving has to go and do whatever it's told to do. Um, and all of that builds into jitter in the system. So this is totally usable. It's fine to use it for imaging, but it's important to understand the price that you're paying. And that price right now is, in the case of a 100 millisecond exposure, is that my cells are receiving potentially toxic photo bleaching for 25% longer than they need to. And it's wasted energy because I'm not getting any data out of it. Okay, let's bring this down to, say, 50 milliseconds. And we'll snap a couple images here. Here in the time domain, 7682. There's a 70. So as my exposure time drops, this becomes even more important. And the jitter becomes even more important as well. For obvious reasons. Okay. So what can we do about that? So now we're going to invoke this method called blanking. So in this example here, we still have the capture event. We still have the serial data. We still have a closed serial data. The difference is the shutters stay closed on the initial data operation. And what I mean by that. So in this case, specifically with the trigger scope, we're telling the trigger scope to enable blanking. And what it'll do is it will receive the serial data and it'll say, all right, I understand that I'm supposed to be open uh, or that TTL1 should be high. But it's only going to go high when there is a logical and operation taking place. So software has to say go high and a voltage input on trigger, uh, and then normally it's trigger one, has to also go high. Now, where does that come from? That comes from your camera. Normally on scientific cameras, you know, typical Hamamatsu, photometrics, and or um, uh, Raptor camera, any of these, you're going to have a multi-pin connector on the back and that connector will allow you to get an output signal where when the camera is actively collecting light, the signal goes high. Now it can go high, it can go low, it doesn't really matter, but if we take that signal and route it to the trigger uh, line one on the trigger scope, then the trigger scope will basically only open the shutter when the software tells it to, plus when the input has gone high or low. Again, that depends on how you set it up. So what does this look like? We're staying closed here in this kind of this vertical axis here is kind of like time. So starting from zero time at the top and working our way down. So camera goes exposed high. The physical wire connected from the camera into the trigger scope now reads say three and a half volts or five volts and because of that we have this boolean and um, so now the shutter is open and then as soon as the camera acquisition ends and that exposed pin goes low then all of the outputs are turned off finally the software comes back and says yeah turn the turn the laser led off okay so what does this look like now, on my demo here, I don't have a real um, camera, right? I have a real trigger scope, but my camera, I'm emulating the output signal using this um, signal generator here at the top. So that the blue line on the oscilloscope down here represents the signal generator. So I'm going to turn that on right now. At first, you won't see it. Okay, so it's turned on. The oscilloscope's only going to update based on the, the um, yellow line, and the, the yellow line has not gone active yet. So what I'll do is I'll just snap one image. Now, the frequency of the signal is currently set at um, 100 milliseconds, so it's a half-duty cycle. So it's going to go on for 50 milliseconds and then back off for 50 milliseconds. So if I snap an image, it just depends on where we catch the signal generator. Okay, so we caught it. In this case, actually it doesn't even matter. We're not catching the signal generator because blanking's not turned on. So the blue line is showing up, but the camera's just doing its thing. 
uh, or I should say TTL1 is doing its thing. It's not in any way correlated to the blue line. Okay, so now how do we turn on blanking? And just to show this, by the way, I'll go live. So this is just the, can the TTL1 is now on infinitely, and you can see that th there's no interaction with whatever is happening on that blue line. All right, so now we're going to turn on blanking. So if we go to the device menu and then device property browser, trigger scuff, uh, stuff is down at the bottom. We have this um, TTL1 through 8 blanking. And again, we have blank on low, or we can choose high. In our case, we want low. And we're going to turn on TTL1 through 8 blanking. That says if any channel, uh, TTL output 1 through 8, if any of them happen to be on, we don't want them to actually turn on unless that blanking line goes active. All right, so now if I go live, what I can see is that the blanking directly follows that blue line input. And this is relatively fast. This is going to be less than 100 microseconds or about a tenth of a millisecond. I'll zoom in just to show that. So the grid pattern on the oscilloscope is um, set to 100 microseconds per division. And you can see that we've got about a 90 microsecond delay, but it's nice and consistent. So that's exactly what we want. And the output's only going to go high when that input uh, goes high. Okay, let's do something a little different. Now what I'll do is I'll just snap an image. Now here what's gonna happen is the system will only go high when the software says to turn on. So in this case, it's for the duration of the exposure time and when we catch that blue line being high. And because again, this isn't real, the two are not correlated, but you kind of get the general idea that it's going to go, um, it'll only be high when both items are logically booleaned on. So like in this case, the exposure line started and then we caught the tail end of one input on and then the beginning of a second input and then the exposure time ran out. Now we can increase that, uh, the likelihood that that happens. We'll give it 150 millisecond exposure, we'll snap an image and we'll, we'll catch a couple of these, right? So this is basically what blanking is. Now just to show we can invert this, We'll go to the device property browser, scroll down, and we'll set this up for blanking on um, high. Yep. There we go. So now we go high when the input goes low. So it's blanked on high. And when the input goes low, the output is enabled. So this would be a logical and slash not. So that's the effective output of um, blanking. That's what it does. I recommend for anybody that's um, purchasing a camera, be sure to check how much it's going to cost to get yourself a breakout cable for your camera. Oftentimes these cables run you know, around $125 to $175 oftentimes as well. If you just ask um, for that to be included in the camera purchase price, you can get that thrown in effectively for free, um, especially considering the price of the camera. So um, I it's never a bad idea to have a breakout cable. You never know where you're going to need it. Um, and then the other thing is if you're kind of on a tight budget and you already have everything you need, but you don't have the breakout cable, um, in almost every case, well, really in every case, the manufacturer should be able to provide the pinout and the connector type specified for your camera. So if you had to, you could order the parts and make a cable. We've done that for some customers, depending on you know what they needed in the past. I'd always recommend buying the manufacturer's cable over having uh, one made, but it's possible if for whatever reason you can't get your hands on a cable. Uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching. And I'll try to make more videos kind of covering stuff like this in the future.